introduction. Thank you. Uh, I am McKinney Harmon Johnson. I live in South Salem, represented by Senator Jackie Leonard and Representative Joe Pack. So, uh, outside the city limits, but in Marion County. Uh, so, let me just say real quick. I think I, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Uh, it's been it's been a bunch of months since I've been at a regular meeting. Um, part of that is because I now have an office, my main offices are actually in Portland, not in Salem. Uh, so it, I'm spending much more time up there than, um, than I would, uh, probably I'd prefer actually, but <laughs> don't tell folks in Portland now. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to be here with you tonight, and thanks for keeping my name tag, that made me feel good especially. Maybe it won't be there anymore, but I won't take it personally, it's not, that's cool. Um, so the other thing I want to thank this group for is, it's been about, about two and a half years since I moved back to Salem. Uh, I am from, I was raised in Salem and Portland. I am from Oregon. I just see my mother on the mural in the Peace Plaza there across from the library. This is my town. Um, but I've been away for a long time for college and I worked in the, both houses of the U.S. Congress, including the former Senator Lou Perry Reed. Uh, and I worked for the White House under this president. Uh, and then I got married to a wonderful man uh, who was a New Yorker and living in New York was not an option. Staying <laughs> <laughs> in D.C. was pretty much over that, uh, and I had never lived someplace that I preferred more than this, so it was time to move back home. Uh, we did that with the plan of having a very quiet life. we a little country law firm of our own. I am a lawyer, my husband is a lawyer. Uh, he graduated at the top of our law school class. I was president of our class, I don't remember my rank, because it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> my plan was that he would be the senior partner, I'd be the junior partner, we'd like, learn from him, and we'd be able to help folks who need really good lawyers. Enjoy our dogs and sunsets and you know the the, the good old fashioned ordinary life instead of the New York City or Washington D.C. crazy crazy way of life. That's the plan. And then somewhere along the way, the no, I should say when I got here though, I wanted to be involved uh, because I've been an employee of Democrats for a long time and been involved with Democratic politics as a staffer for a long time. So I was looking forward to being involved on a community level, quite frankly. Um, so one of the first things I did, I got my library card at my first library, um, and I found my Marion County Dinner, so we came to a meeting, I think our second month living back in town. Um, so pretty early on, and you folks were really welcoming, and we went out and did the names and all that, and I didn't know anybody then. Uh, but our chair was kind enough to uh, come on out and uh, had drinks, and I think we got, you know, went to happy hour across the street to introduce himself and to, and to welcome us and to encourage us to be involved, and that was very cool. Um, so my husband is Elias Johnson, and he uh, has also been named off the Marion a little bit in the past, but tonight he is with our puppy, because she insists upon having a lot of attention paid to her, or things would be destroyed. <laughs> so, um, he answered her call. <laughs> um, I, so that's the, um, oh, one more thing, just on the personal front. Uh, I did work for Governor Kitts Hopper very briefly for about six months. Some of you may have read or heard about that. I was his communications director uh, until he fired me and uh, almost drove a bus over me. Um, <laughs> but being who I am, um, I, f I was lucky enough, frankly, fortunate enough to be in a position to speak up about things that I thought were important, and it turned out that other folks thought they were important too. Uh, but during that time, it was really uh, a blessing, frankly, because I got to find out who my friends were. I know a lot of people, but I don't have a whole lot of friends, quite frankly. And there are people in this room who are always very kind and generous who still invited me to come have breakfast with the Woodward Dems uh, and talk about things that really matter to me. But there were other folks who I had worked with very intensely, uh, frankly, in um, up in the Capitol, who would sort of act like they didn't see me coming down the street if they could avoid the stare. Right? I sort of stick out in Salem, so <laughs> if you don't see me walking down, the, it's you know. Right. One of those things. My, you know, my husband sort of just one of those people just owe oh, me. Can I? Uh, but the folks in this room did did not do that. Decidedly did not do that. And I'm. It's worth noting it because uh, it's special. So I appreciate it. Um, and it worked out for all of us, quite frankly, because now I have fewer friends and know who my real friends are, which is really great. Um, so shifting gears, I am the president and CEO of the Urban League of Portland. Um, the Urban League of Portland is a non partisan, not-for-profit organization. We are 70 years old. We are a social justice and civil rights organization. We are one of the oldest on the West Coast, and we are the oldest um, in Oregon. Turns out ACLU is 30 or 40 years old. 
Okay. Urban League is 70. Mm -hmm. Our primary mission is to serve African Americans and other Oregonians uh, to help them become economically empowered. That is the path through which we work on civil rights. Meaning that if you don't have a job, it's pretty hard to assert your rights. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a job, it's pretty hard to have a roof over your head. If you don't have a job, it's hard to make sure that you yourself uh, can get the education you need, let alone your kids, and to create the kind of stability that we want to see in our communities. So the, the, the starting point for us is economic empowerment and uh, equity. So not the equality thing, because that's different. We know that in this room, but equity. Uh, and it turns out it's a really super cool job to have. Even though the name is the Urban League of Portland, that's just sort of a vestige of the fact that we're so old. We are a statewide organization. And I can't quite figure out what to do. Your name is 70 years old, but it doesn't really fit what you do exactly. But how do you ditch a 70-year-old name to become the Urban League of Oregon? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I've only been on this job for five and a half months now. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens to be, my main office happens to be two blocks from my middle school. So I did grow up with this Urban League. It's been a part of my life for a long time. Uh, there were always activities for kids, Saturday school and after school programs and leadership programs and all kinds of cool things. But I never wanted to run a not-for-profit organization. Or not one of my goals. Um, being democratic politics was enough. It was the way that I served my country, and I did my my, my professional volunteering, as I called it. Um, and I really loved that work. But then, when I was done with it, I was going to be a real volunteer instead of a professional volunteer. Um, but sort of twists and turns and changes happened that led me to this opportunity. And it turns out, it's just right because it allows me to work on the things that matter most to me um, with people who are very important to me uh, in a way that I had not done before. It's super, super challenging. So uh, I enjoy that quite a bit. I'm here tonight to talk a little bit about my organization. Um, recently at the Democratic Party of Oregon Summit, I was on a panel there talking about um, jobs and the importance of jobs to uh, Oregonians. And uh, the Urban League, it, we hosted sort of a guerrilla panel I'll call it that because I'd offered sort of a full-fledged panel to the Democratic Party, uh, and they told me that, you know, panels were full, so they couldn't do it. So that's all right. I'm a Democrat. You can't tell me no. Uh, oh, there's chairs, there's table, there's an empty room. Sounds like a panel to me. Come on, y'all. Uh, so that's what we did. We went and we made flyers, and we invited some folks to come and sit and talk with us about issues because how we organize, right? Uh, I don't need the fancy stuff. You don't put me in the program. Um, in order for me to have a panel. That's all right. Uh, and some folks were able to hear from us, not only official panel, but then also, and the one that we did uh, that was specifically focused on social justice and civil rights issues from the urban League standpoint. So that was really very cool, uh, and I in enjoyed that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what the Urban League does, um, because I, not enough folks know about what we do, and sometimes our name throws people off, whether it's the Portland part or the urban part. Um, and I have the opportunity to help folks that understand more broadly why, frankly, why you should care. Um, and why someone who lives in the rural part of Marion County <laughs> could be the president of an organization uh, such as this. So um, the next bit I want to share with you about who we are and what we do uh, is so we are a direct services, social services agency. We are also an advocacy agency, meaning that I've got these four locations in Portland. Um, not big ones, we're, you know, uh, but our main office, uh, where all the magic happens. We have run a senior center, and I call it the Wisdom Center, quite frankly, uh, because while my father is technically of age to go, he will not go to a place that's called the Senior Center because he is not a, a senior citizen. Uh, so the Wisdom Center, though, is all about that. Uh, and our uh, Wisdom Center is different than other places. You walk in and you will hear Motown playing. You may hear the blues playing. You will see folks dancing, playing cards. Uh, they may be knitting and working on arts and crafts projects and that kind of stuff, too. Um, but it's certainly not sort of the stereotypical um, idea of what one might think about as a as a day center for elders. Uh, it's our pride and joy.